started looking at the book of John, the gospel according to St. John, gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We mentioned the fact that the entire book of John is focused on a central uh, theme, which can be found in chapter 20, verse 31. It says, these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. So this is the central theme. We presented this. So everything that we will do from chapter, chapter 1 to the end will be focused on this truth. And I pray that this truth will be established in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we receive the empowerment to understand and live according to God's expectation in Jesus' name. Uh, pastor uh, Gerald, the senior pastor, did a wonderful uh, exposition here last Friday when he looked through uh, chapter 1 from verse 1 to 18, uh, but he skipped you know, a couple of verses uh, intentionally, though, uh, because it, it didn't flow with the rest of the information that he wanted to get across to us. So the, the section that he skipped intentionally uh, is chapters, I mean, verse 6 to 8. He skipped that. So we will cover that today, and we will skip, you know, jump to verse 19 so that we can connect uh, the dots. This portion talks about uh, John the Baptist, the ministry of John the Baptist. So, about John, one thing that we need to know is that John himself was not the light. He was not the light. Who was he? He was simply a witness to tell about the light. That's his mission. That's his purpose. That's why he was born. That's what he lived for. And that's what he fulfilled. He was born to show, to reveal Christ to the world. The meaning of John, you know, there is meaning in names. So I don't know what your name is and what the meaning is, but every name should have a meaning, right? So John means Jehovah shows favor. Amen? Jehovah shows favor. And of a truth, if you look at Luke chapter 1, and you study the, the story of uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth before this gift was given to them, you will know that of a truth, he is favor. God really showed the parents favor. It's a very fascinating book to read. Uh, Luke chapter 1. Read is very long. Read it when you have time. You will see how God, who specializes in miraculous, how he did wonders in the life of uh, this couple. One amazing thing about this couple, the parents of John, is the fact that the Bible calls them righteous and the Bible calls them blameless. Right? So in the sight of God, they were blameless. But there is a but in their life. But Elizabeth was barren, right? There was no child. And they were well stricken in age before they had a divine encounter, you know, which led to the birth of John. So if we look at John chapter 1, verse 6 to 9, I will still come back a little bit to that story as we go along. Verse 6 to 9 says, God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself 
was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light, the one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone who was coming into the world. Then if you skip to verse 15, it says, John testified about him when he shouted to the crowds, this is the one I was talking about. When I said, someone is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. So, John, as the forerunner of Jesus Christ, came to fulfill the prophecies that went ahead of the birth of Jesus Christ. But as we all know, Jesus Christ needed to be revealed because of the way God introduced him into the world. There wouldn't have been any need for this, for this if God had split open the heavens and just lowered him, you know, to the earth. I mean, everybody, it would be very obvious that this is extraordinary. But it could be your neighbor, neighbor if you were living at that time. And you would just, you know, you would just have treated him like Joseph's son, the carpenter's son, you know, that ordinary, you know, low-placed person. But there is something that is unique about Jesus that ordinary eyes cannot see. So this is the reason why John the Baptist was sent ahead to come and reveal Jesus. And the ministry of John the Baptist was so successful that the Pharisees, all the teachers of the time, they, they respected him. And they wanted him to be even more than what he was. They were looking up to him to, you know, fulfill their expectation. So, they came to him to ask him questions. Because they saw the things that he was doing. He was preaching about repentance. He was baptizing people. And they have lived all their years expecting the Messiah. They've lived all their years expecting the prophet. They have lived all their years expecting for Elijah to come back. And now, all of a sudden, somebody just appeared and he started talking about repentance. He started baptizing people and he never lived like common people. He lived in the wilderness. He was not eating the uh, biryani and all this stuff. That was not his food. His food was special. So they observed and wanted to understand more. What, something is different about this guy and something is different about what he is doing. Let's find out what exactly is about. What is this about? You know, uh, church leaders, they always believe that they are the only ones that, you know, have this special standing before God. So when they see, you know, somebody like that, it's like, what are you doing? You know? So this leads me to talk about identity, purpose, and authority of John that was queried. Identity, his authority, and his purpose was queried, was challenged. How did they challenge this? The spiritual leaders, they sent emissaries to go to John. When you get there, deliver our questions. And you must come back with, you know, answers. So some questions they ask him, or the questions they ask him, who are you? Who are you? If you read uh, if you read this scripture, 
It will be very interesting. Who are you? That's the first question they ask him. Who are you? But, I mean, you come to me to ask me, who are you? And the next response I give you is, I am not the Messiah. How do you connect the two? How do you connect the two? But he was able to go deep into the heart behind this question. This question is more than who are you? What is your name? It has to do with his assignment. Who are you? Many people, when you meet them for the first time, you ask them, who are you? May I know you? Wow, the dossier will be so long, you know, full of accomplishments and achievements, all limited to this planet. But interestingly, John was never interested in those earthly things that, you know, perishes so fast or earthly accomplishment. You know, Somebody told me one time that uh, uh, in a gathering, you know, they were introducing one another, and uh, he introduced a pastor to his friend. He said, meet, uh, like I said, meet brother. <laughs> and this pastor flared up. I'm not, I'm not brothers. <laughs> I am pastor. So, so, so. Hallelujah. You know, meet, uh, meet Brother Emmanuel. And for Brother Emmanuel to say, why are you calling me Brother Emmanuel? Don't you know I'm Pastor Emmanuel? You understand? Forgetting that this man is first a brother before he became a pastor, right? And forgetting that when we go to God in prayers, we don't say in Brother Jesus' name, or Pastor Jesus' name, we call Jesus, Jesus. When something is very big, it doesn't have any qualifier. That's why we say God, and we are very comfortable. That's why we say Jesus, and we are very comfortable, because he's simply great. Hallelujah. So John responded. He said, I am not the Messiah, because he knew that these people, they have lived all their lives in expectation of what had been promised by the prophets. So he said, I am not the Messiah. When he said that, okay, that means one down out of their expectations, right? And they are still expecting the Elijah to come back. They are still expecting the prophet that Moses promised in Deuteronomy chapter 18. They are still expecting that prophet to manifest. So they say, okay, you are not the Messiah. Are you Elijah? He said, no. Are you that prophet? You know, that prophet means a specific prophet that had been prophesied will come before the arrival of the Messiah, you know. So he said, no. Then they became troubled. They said, then, who are you? We need an answer for those who sent us. We cannot go back without knowing who you are. We need an answer. Give us an answer. Who are you? What do you have to say about yourself? If somebody poses that question at you today, what will you say about yourself? What will you say about yourself? In Deuteronomy 18.15, the Bible says, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me. That was Moses when he was giving his departure, you know, speech to the children of Israel. He will send a prophet like me from among your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. So, if you look at Luke chapter 1 that I mentioned earlier on, John actually has a lot of credentials that he could have presented to these people about himself. He could have said, you know, a lot of things about, 
how old his parents were before they conceived him, how miraculous his conception was, how his father was dumb until he was to be named. You know, he could have said all those things. How the prophecies came that he would be approved of God. How the prophecies said a lot of things about him. He would have presented all these things. You want to know about these credentials? Go to Luke chapter uh, 1 and concentrate on verse 17 to, I mean, 13 to 17. You'll see a lot of this about, about uh, John. But what mattered most to John is the purpose of his life. The purpose of his life. Everything has a purpose. That's what's most important to him. So he quoted from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. He said, I'm the voice shouting in the wilderness. Clear the way for the Lord's coming. This is all that John had to say about himself. I am the voice crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, in another version. That is what he lived for. What do you live for? What do I live for? This should be the question. We don't want to live, you know, and miss the purpose. And I pray that we will not live and miss the purpose in the name of Jesus. This question confronts people every time. And it is very important for you to have a ready answer. Because if you lose your identity, then you lose the very essence while you are alive. When you recognize what your identity is, and you embrace it, when trying times come, challenges of life that we come to all, your identity that you have embraced is what will keep you going. It is what will give you strength. It, will, it is what will help you not to compromise. No matter what the challenges will be, it is your recognition of your identity in Christ that will give you the boldness to withstand the heat of the day. You must have a ready answer. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says, You must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks you about the hope that you have as a believer, always be ready to explain it. Always be ready to explain it. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. You remember the case of Moses? Despite he grew up in the palace, he recognized that there was a disconnect between the palace and his people, and he thought he was in a privileged position, you know, to rescue his people from oppression. And there was a problem between these people and an Egyptian. He killed the Egyptian, hid him in the ground. The following day, he saw his people fighting each other, and he, he stepped in, you know, to make peace. And one of them challenged him. In Exodus chapter, uh, chapter 2, who appointed you to be? our prince and judge. Who appointed you to be our prince and our judge? Are you going to kill me the way you killed the Egyptian yesterday? 
So he knew immediately that what he did was no longer hidden, and he could not answer that question. Who appointed you a prince and a judge over us? He couldn't answer that question, so he had to flee. So this question is very important, and that's why I'm spending some time on it. It's very important for you to be able to answer this question. Who are you? What is your purpose? What is your assignment? And who gave it to you? Moses was unable to answer that question, so he fled. And later in life, when God caught up with him to give him an assignment that is practically the same thing he set out initially to do on his own, right? But now God was commissioning him, right? Right? He suddenly remembered that the first time he tried it, his authority, his identity was challenged. And he wasn't going to give in to God. He says, look, if I go and I tell them, the God of your father, ask me to come and liberate you. If they ask me, what is his name? What shall I tell them? What shall I tell them? He wanted to be sure that this aspect is settled before committing to what God had in stock for him. John never had this problem. He understood his purpose from the beginning and he was committed to it. And it was not until God gave the answer, I am who I am, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that will be my name forever. Not until that time that he proceeded on the assignment. Jesus Christ also knew that this question is very, very important, and he needed to settle it once and for all amongst his disciples. He tried to find out from them, from your interactions with the people, who are they saying that I am? And his disciples provided the feedback. And Jesus Christ said, that's fine. But you, very close to me, who do you say that I am? And Peter, through the power of the Holy Spirit, received the revelation and says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Case settled. So, this is very important. Very important. If you do not know who you are, if you are in identity crisis, if you do not know why you exist, the purpose that God has saved you, the purpose for which he has kept you alive, that you are still living, you are not dead, if you don't know this, it could be a source of trouble. When God anointed Paul and he was healing people and casting out demons from their lives, some Jewish people also wanted to use this in their incarnation, I mean, incantation uh, activities. Then the Bible says that they moved from city to city to cast devils out of people. And when they are casting out devils, they say, in the name of Jesus Christ, whom Paul preached. Third party relationship. They don't have that personal relationship with him. What interests me most in this uh, chapter, uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 19, from verse 13 to 16, is that they have been doing this until one day when the seven sons of Sceva, until one day they encountered an authority that is higher than their own. Because they didn't have 
Christ's authority. They were only trying to, you know, tap from Paul. And they were unwilling to give up what they were practicing. So when they said, I cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom Paul preached, the man that was possessed of the devil, the spirit in him, leaped out. He says, I know Jesus, I know Paul, but who are you? This question, we come to you in different forms. Who are you? That is why if you don't know who you are, you cannot pray for the sick and have the sick recover because your authority will be challenged. And if you, if you are doubtful and you think that you are not in right standing with God or God does not approve of your being, then you cannot make any success. So this devil jumped at them, tore their clothes, and they ran out naked. Let's settle this question once and for all. Who you are? When we settle this question, life becomes easy for us. Amen? Life becomes easy for us. So a child of God should not have identity crisis, I repeat. And your identity in Christ is clearly explained in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 10, where God refers to you as what? A chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's very own possession. That's who you are. Your song this morning, very powerful. That is who we are in Christ. And the reason is that we might show others the goodness of God. And we show others the goodness of God through the different ministries that God has committed into our hands. In different flavors, we show for the goodness of God. This is who we are. This is the purpose of God for us. The reason he has separated us is that we might manifest his goodness to everyone that we come across. The reason he sent John ahead was for John to reveal who he was to the people. And the same reason you and I are called. He called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. You were previously without identity, now God's people. Wow. What a privilege. What a privilege. People without identity, now God's people. Wow. Some people are so mad when you say, my dear Heavenly Father, because they cannot comprehend how can an earthly person refer to God as his father. They cannot capture that. It's very deep. But that's who you are. That's who you are. God's own very possession. That's who you are. If anything, situation, sickness, disease, wants to challenge this authority, stand on your feet and say, I am God's own possession. If anything comes to defile your body, declare your identity in Christ, that you are God's own very possession. Maintain your authority. Maintain your authority. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, how we love you. 
we lift your name in all the earth. May your kingdom be established in our praises. As your people declare your mighty works, blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord, God Almighty, who reigns forevermore. Blessed be the Lord. a moment to make some declarations about your life. God is listening to your declarations this morning. What is that challenge? What is that experience that has come to challenge your identity? That has come to challenge your authority? That has come to challenge your purpose? I want you to speak to that thing right now. God is listening to what you have to say. In your own words, speak to your God. Your Father is listening. I decree by the authority in the name of Jesus that as you have spoken, God has heard and he will address it and his name will be glorified in your life in the name of Jesus. I decree that that situation is addressed right now and I decree you victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord God Almighty release the power for boldness upon you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for making us overcomers indeed. Blessed be your name, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.